The big story, guys, over the summer break has been the Oscar Piastri McLaren and Alpine saga. And in this video, what we're going to get into is just how the saga uh, happened, what has happened so far in the summer break. Look at um, who is to blame, I guess you could say, for how this has all happened, and maybe from Alpine's side, but also look at just where this situation is headed for the future and how I think it will all play out eventually. So, coming into uh, the summer break, it was assumed that Alpine were going to remain with the same lineup for 2023 that they've obviously had for this year for 2022, even though they had Oscar Piastri on their books. And the reason that is, is because Alpine this season have been very competitive. Their car's been good, but I wouldn't say it's been as great, though, or the biggest reason as to why they're fourth currently in the Constructors' Championship. I think the main reason is the two drivers, Esteban Ocon and Fernando Alonso, performing at such a high level and really being, you know, so consistent with their points finishes. Um, a lot of the times, both Alpines are in the points and outscoring and helping you know, the team outscore McLaren, their main rivals, for that fourth place. So it was assumed that for next year it would be um, Alonso and Ocon at Alpine. And I think we were all right in expecting that because if Alonso wanted to stay, why would you possibly change this lineup when it is working so well for you? Well, right after the race in Hungary a few weeks ago, everything got very, very dramatic. Because Fernando Alonso, who, again, we were expecting to stay at the Alpine team for 2023, all of a sudden decided that he was not going to stay for the Alpine team. And it came out literally the morning after the Hungarian Grand Prix that Fernando Alonso was joining Aston Martin in 2023 to replace Sebastian Vettel, who, of course, is retiring at the end of this season. Nobody saw this coming at all. I think there might have been the slight rumour about Alonso and Aston Martin, but it was never heavily rumoured or even mildly rumoured that this was going to happen. So it was a massive surprise straight away that Alonso had signed up for Aston Martin for 2021. So, naturally, you would expect that Alpine would make the simple decision to go with Oscar Piastri to replace Fernando Alonso because he was, you know, ready and waiting to be in the Alpine team. And they did announce, did Alpine, that uh, Oscar Piastri would be racing for them in 2023. I believe this was the following day after Fernando Alonso's um, announcement that he was going to Aston Martin and at this point I think everyone assumed that this was now over but then in a absolutely mental turn of events Oscar Piastri then announced on Twitter that he will not be racing for Alpine in 2023 and that he would be racing elsewhere again something that nobody saw coming at all um, when this and this tweet, by the way, came out, I think, an hour or two after the announcement for Alpine that he would be racing for them um, in 2023. So let's get into what Piastri actually had to say on his Twitter. He said, quote, I understand that without my agreement, Alpine F1 have put out a press release late this afternoon that I am driving for them next year. This is wrong and I have not signed a contract with Alpine for 2023. I will not be driving for Alpine next year. This was an absolute bombshell that Oscar Piastri dropped. And you can go and view the tweet for yourself on Twitter. It has like hundreds of thousands of likes. Um, and it's, yeah, it just has absolutely massive engagement on it. It's one of the craziest things we've seen uh, when it comes to the driver market, um, especially in the age of social media. It was just a massively unexpected event and it was now putting the driver market in such a weird place because now that Oscar Piastri denied that he wasn't going to be driving for Alpine for next year it now meant a 
according to rumours, that Oscar Piastri would be racing instead next year for the McLaren team in 2023 and racing quite probably um, on uh, replacing, sorry, Lan uh, not Lando Norris, Daniel Ricciardo at the team, who of course has performed poorly over the last couple years for that team. Now, let me just get into quickly um, why Oscar Piastri said this in terms of that he will not be racing for uh, Alpine in 2023. Now, the rumour is that Oscar Piastri's uh, contract, and I'll just try and get this up on screen if I can, and the reason I'm showing Fernando Alonso is because he was one, really, who started this whole uh, craziness off. So, Oscar Piastri, it is rumoured, this is not confirmed, by the way, this is just a rumour um, at the moment, but it is rumoured that the deadline for Alpine signing Piastri to a race contract for 2023 may have been on the 31st of July. The 31st of July was the race day in Hungary, and of course, Fernando Alonso announced he was racing for Aston Martin on the 1st of August. So, um, Fernando Alonso's move came at just the absolute worst time for the Alpine team, because now, if this is true, that Piastri uh, had a contract or um, you know, that, that that deadline was in place, that if it went past the 31st of July, that he could negotiate with uh, different teams, such as McLaren, maybe even Williams, who has been rumoured as well as possibly um, hiring Piastri for their team, then it put Alpine, and puts possibly Alpine in such a bad position, because that means, or it, what it meant, was that their entire plans of a driver lineup just completely imploded in essentially 24 hours. And Piastri, from his point of view, um, because, again, if this is true, that the deadline for him signing a race contract for Alpine, a valid one for 2023, the deadline for that was the 31st of July, once that passed, if that is true, it was then uh, rumoured, heavily rumoured, and had some good sources to go with it as well, that he would be replacing at the team uh, Daniel Ricciardo. This was uh, pretty much going around in the media a couple days after Piastri spectacularly announced on Twitter that he would not be uh, racing for uh, Alpine in 2023. And here is the um, story itself. A source, I think, told ESPN that uh, Daniel Ricciardo was told, I think, during the Hungarian Grand Prix weekend by Andreas Seidel, who, of course, is the McLaren F1 team boss, that he would not be racing for them next year and that they would be uh, that he would be replaced by Oscar Piastri and that they would try and uh, buy out, basically, um, maybe not buy out, is it buy out his contract the right term? Or they would basically pay him off to make sure that he does not race for them next year. And the rumour is that Daniel Ricciardo is wanting $21 uh, million dollars for McLaren, you know, to spend $21 million to ensure that he doesn't race for them next year. Now, we have seen this happen in the past. Kimi Raikkonen, I think, was paid $15 million in 2010 uh, not to race for them in that year because back then, Kimi did actually have a contract for 2010, but Ferrari wanted Alonso and got Alonso instead to replace Raikkonen, so they paid off Kimi, so they could have Fernando Alonso and Felipe Massa as their driver lineup. So, in terms of is Piastri going to McLaren, it's still kind of up in the air at the moment when it comes to this because McLaren, I mean, if they could find the money to pay off Ricardo, then maybe, yeah, they can get that done. But if they can't, then it puts Piastri in a very, very difficult position, and quite possibly means that Oscar Piastri, despite all of this 
uh, craziness might not actually be on the grid next year. That is definitely a possibility. Um, another possibility, though, with Oscar is that he might still race for Alpine next year. The reason that is, is because, and I'll get to it now if I can, is because Alpine, I think, are going to the contract, uh, is it contract recognition board in the UK to try and um, to prove that, you know, that the contract that Alpine had of Oscar Piastri is absolutely correct and that he will be racing for them next year. We did see this in terms of Formula One. We did see this back in 2004 when... Uh, Jensen Button announced he was moving to Williams BMW for 2005, but then BAR went to the contract recognition board, I think it was, and then got that overturned, and then he stayed at BAR, even though there was a couple years after where he was still rumoured, heavily rumoured, to be going to Williams, but eventually stayed at that team, and eventually, of course, that was a great decision for him because he ended up winning the World Championship with what eventually became the Braun team. But, yeah... Uh, uh, with this, you know, thing in the top left, you can see here, Otmar Safnauer said that he is 90% certain that Alpine's contractual saga with Oscar Piastri will head to the high court because if he is not with the team next season, they will want compensation. So basically, from Oscar Piastri's point of view, in terms of Alpine, if... They, if the contract recognition board, if they rule in Alpine's favour that, you know, the contract is absolutely, you know, fine from Alpine's side and that Piastri has to um, fulfil, I guess, the obligations of the contract and race for Alpine in 2023, then it won't go to the high court. But uh, Otmar Saf now says he's 90% sure because um, they want... If he doesn't race with them next year, as he said, they want compensation. Because remember, they have been funding quite heavily his career in the last, I think, two and a half, three years of Alpine. So this will end inevitably between Alpine and Oscar Piastri in court. Which is a shame, of course. You don't want to see these things end in court. But that's just the way things happen. But I think I've covered basically there... Um, in as best a way, hopefully, as I could, just how this saga has happened. So Piastri, again, in recap, Piastri was announced to be going to Alpine uh, to replace Fernando Alonso, who's now going to Aston Martin. But Piastri said that he isn't and he won't be racing for them next year. And maybe that July 31st deadline is the reason why, because after that date, he can go and negotiate with any team other than Alpine. And if that is true, then if McLaren can, you know, pay Daniel Ricciardo enough money to not race for them next season, then Piastri, by the looks of it, will be racing for McLaren next season. But um, he will probably still be going to court with Alpine over uh, compensation and, you know, just Alpine trying to recover the money they invested into um into Oscar Piastri, and obviously from Alonso's point of view, yeah, he's off to Aston Martin, and Ricardo hopefully will still be on the grid next year. There is lots of rumours that he could be going the other way to Alpine. We'll see if that is true. But what I want to quickly get into with, um, with this situation is who is to blame in terms of what has happened here. Let's quickly get into that. So in my view... The person to blame, and I know people have made lots of memes about it, and it has been funny, by the way. I'm not going to deny it. it has been funny. The person to blame for this whole saga, and the reason I don't actually feel... Um, I don't... My opinion of Alpine is not that bad coming out of this situation. It's because Fernando Alonso, at the end of the day, if what we've heard is correct, that... Alpine had no indication that Fernando Alonso wanted to leave them to go to um, to go to Aston Martin, and he basically told them a pack of lies. Then I don't honestly understand what Alpine could have done if they think Fernando Alonso is going to stay, but then suddenly 
decides to leave, and then let's say that July 31st deadline with Piastri's contract is true, and then Piastri, after that date, can start negotiating with other teams, then instead of, you know, saying that Alpine, you know, have got this massively wrong, it seems to me more so that they've been um, screwed over in this situation. Because the thing is, with Alonso, if he doesn't want to stay at Alpine, that's fine. You don't have to stay anywhere that you don't want to be. But could he have at least told Alpine that he was going to Aston Martin? Could he have not, not at least done that? Because to be honest, that is a pretty shitty thing to do from Fernando. And yeah, it is funny. Um, it is funny that he did that and basically just dropped a bomb and left Alpine to rot in a meme kind of way. But from a serious point of view, I think Fernando Alonso has acted in a very shitty way here because he's essentially bullshitted his team or, you know, the people employing him. And now he's off with another um, company, you know, another F1 team. And now Alpine are in a absolutely terrible situation in terms of their driver lineup for next year, where they're going to have to be now probably scrambling for drivers for 2023. And I've got to say, looking at this situation, I mean, I've done a video in the past about Fernando Alonso and his uh, antics when it comes to dealing with certain teams in the past, but the, I. <sighs> There's good reason, put it this way, there's good reason as to why Fernando isn't exactly liked by a lot of um, teams out there. And this is a clear case of that. You know, Alpine have not screwed him over. Uh, they didn't, it's not like they gave him a car that was, you know, nowhere near as good as they promised. He knew when he went to Alpine that Alpine would be a midfield team. So let's not pretend like it's a situation like McLaren Honda from a few years ago. He knew what he was getting into. Alpine have offered him exactly what he was expecting. They haven't screwed him over, but Alonso has just decided fuck it and to stab him or to stab them in the back. Which I think, if I was from, if I was looking at this from Alpine's point of view, I would feel very betrayed by what Fernando has done, and I think they're right to feel that. Again, Fernando did not have to stay at Alpine, but. If you're going to leave, just be honest and say, I've signed a contract with Aston Martin, I'm going to be leaving, instead of doing what he did, which was, for me, from a serious point of view, just completely uncalled for. And as to, you know, this Alpine situation where they're going to be scrambling for drivers, Fernando Alonso has absolutely caused this, and he, I guess you could say, is at fault for this happening. Um, I would not say Alpine is necessarily at fault for this happening because if that july 31st deadline like i've been saying um uh, you know a million times is um is true with oscar piastri then really what could they have done i mean fernando with you know with fernando lying to them and saying or not giving any any indication that he wanted to leave what could alpine have realistically done if that july 31st deadline is actually true. So Fernando Alonso has absolutely um, caused this to happen. And if I was Alpine, I would uh, feel very, again, betrayed by what Fernando has done. But what is going to happen now with this situation um, going forward? How is this all going to end up and shake out? Well, obviously, Alonso is going to Aston Martin. That's already settled. With Oscar Piastri... What I think will happen is um, I think McLaren will pay Ricardo the money if that is the amount of money that he wants. I think eventually they will pay him the money. Maybe not immediately, uh, say the next month or so. Or maybe they won't pay him now, but you know they won't be able to guarantee it now. Maybe in a few months they'll be able to say, you know, he, we've got the money that we can pay you off now. Um, but I think they will eventually before the end of the year be able to accumulate that money so they can pay Daniel Ricciardo that sum to not race for them next year meaning that Oscar Piastri I think will race for McLaren in 2023 and it will be exciting to see Oscar at McLaren and to see um against uh what do you call it 
against Lando Norris, just how good he is. Obviously, F2 champion in 2021. There's a lot of hype surrounding him, so it'll be great to see just how great uh, he can be in Formula 1. Uh, but in terms of uh, Daniel Ricciardo, where will he end up? It does depend on when McLaren kind of settle the situation with Ricardo um, in terms of, yeah, like I said a moment ago, when they're able to say to him, you know, we'll be able to pay you off and lay out essentially the plan. Because if McLaren can guarantee that they will pay him off for next year to not race for them, the sooner they do that, the better chance Ricardo has of going to a team like Alpine. But if it drags on this situation until the end of the year, then the chances of him going from McLaren to Alpine, of course, he used to race for Alpine slash Renault at the time, those chances become a lot lower because Alpine are not going to just wait for Daniel Ricciardo to maybe get paid off by McLaren um, in the next few months. Alpine are going to want to probably confirm their driver lineup for next season in the next couple of months. So, again, the longer this situation goes on, the less it favours Daniel Ricciardo, unless somehow he races for McLaren next year. But honestly, I don't see how he will. I just don't see how that is going to happen, given everything that has happened in the last um, two or three weeks or so. And, you know, this year with Ricciardo at McLaren. Uh, but if he gets the situation sorted in the next couple of months with the whole being paid off, then I think he will go to the Alpine team. And I think Alpine would be very stupid not to take Daniel Ricciardo back because they need to try and replace Fernando Alonso with the best driver possible they can find. And looking at who's available, you'd have to say Daniel Ricciardo is probably the only one they can go for that is closest to Fernando Alonso. But if it does drag on and he can't go to Alpine, the only other teams I could see him going to is... Maybe Haas F1, if Mick Schumacher, who there are rumours that he might be going to Alpine. Um, maybe Haas F1, you're, you know, replacing Mick. That would be a decent move. But from Ricardo's point of view, he does need to get this sorted. Because if he doesn't, then he could. And there is definitely a chance, not a great chance, probably only a 15-20% chance, that Daniel Ricardo will not be on the grid next year in Formula One. But guys, that is the Oscar Piastri McLaren Alpine saga so far. Let me know in the comments section. Do you agree or disagree with what I had to say? Um, do you think that Fernando Alonso acted bad here in terms of, you know, basically lying to his team and stabbing them in the back when they've not done anything to him um, to deserve this? And also, one point I forgot to mention is, you know, Alpine gave Alonso his um his return into formula one when realistically at the time i don't think anyone else would have so i think fernando should be a bit more grateful to the alpine team than he has been uh, let me know what you think in relation to what i said there and how do you think this situation will will end up will piastri be at mclaren will it be at alpine um where will ricardo be for next year let me know in the comments section down below guys but until my next video it has been me chazer hd goodbye